Hello, today I'm building in Copperdale on a 50 by 40 lot and the house ends up costing around 112,000 simoleons. However, this can be split up into a rental residential lot if you choose to. When I upload this to the gallery, it's not going to be uploaded like that. It's just going to be a regular residential lot because this is for a shell challenge, which I'll get into in a second. But yeah, the house on the left, it ends up being a farmer's market and the upstairs is an apartment. And then the house on the right is a two bedroom house. So this can be a like two household lot if you choose to split it up a little bit. Um, when this is uploaded to my channel, it might not be on the gallery right away because I might go back in to add some clutter in, but I wanted to get this up kind of early because this is for my shell challenge, mine and Siren Witch's shell challenge, which isn't due until October 23rd. Um, this was a fundraiser milestone unlock for our pcrf fundraiser that we had run on our twitch streams over the summer and so i wanted to make sure that i like finished my entry for it early so that if anybody wants to participate they have time to kind of like see the video or see my build and be maybe inspired to want to create something using the shell that we've created. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the rules right now. Um, so normal shell challenge rules apply. You can do whatever you want <laughs> with it. Um, you can't change the walls. That's like the only thing about it. We do have some special rules that are like more like prompts. And there are five of them, but you can skip any two of them. So you don't have to do it all five. This is kind of just like a fun little thing to help like get some inspiration. It's something that Vicky, aka Siren Witch, does a lot in her shell challenges. And this is the first one we're doing together. So it's like really exciting. But the rules are one, a ghost lives here. Two, must use all items included, which is that tree that I had placed that is red on my game, but that's because my game is set in like mid to late fall. That tree will just be green and um, the tombstone and then the other three items towards the front and the cow plant, which the cow plant ended up dying while I was building this because I was like going through time and changing the time of day and stuff. So I'll have to re-get it from the gallery. <laughs> so if you have the cow plant and it dies, um, I think you could just look up cow plant on the gallery and you could place one down again. I'm pretty sure it should be easy to find. Um, and then rule number three would be it is located on a flower field. Four is that the river must stay. So you could see that river that connect like is in between the two houses. Um, so the rule is it could stay, but if you skip the rule, you could just delete it and do whatever you want with the landscape. And then rule number five is that you need to build a bridge on the lot and it could be anywhere on the lot. It doesn't have to be over the river like I did. It could be connecting the two houses or it could just be a very tiny bridge maybe like hidden in like a pathway or something um so it could really be anything we kind of had that rule just for like your interpretation what you feel like would work best for your build and what you choose to do with it and i didn't move the two shells around on the lot you could totally do that if you want to you could use the tool where you could pick up each individual house and place it anywhere. I kind of liked where we built the houses, so I didn't really want to change it. Um, I built the shell on the left. I, when like we were thinking of doing a shell challenge together, um, my vision for one of them was to have like a like plus sign type of shape. And I did roof it while we were doing it to make sure that it was like actually like roofable <laughs> and then um vicky did the one on the right which it's like the standard siren witch shell challenge the roofing is really difficult <laughs> and like i feel like i'm blaming her that it might be hard when i'm always in her ear telling her that she needs to make the shell more difficult <laughs> and i did like struggle a bit with the roofing on that one um, some of it was like poking into the upstairs, which happens often 
in builds when you use rounded roof pieces which i i know and i knew that when i started it and that's why i didn't like raise up a lot of the terrain because i was like oh i know that that roof like bug happens when the house is too high up and i feel like that house is on a very tiny foundation i feel like it shouldn't have caused an issue but it did anyway <laughs> and um the landscaping for this build and just i guess the whole concept that i ended up going with was very inspired by the game rika which i haven't played and i don't really plan on playing but i was watching siren witch play it on her twitch stream and it was like really making me want to build in the sims and i was like i want to do a fall farm like house in the forest and i was like but megan you have a lot of work in progress builds right now do not start another one and i was like but you know what i can do i could maybe do that with our shell challenge because you know there's two houses so i can make like a cute little town almost um that's like buried in the forest off like a dirt path or something and if i pick a big enough lot i can do some sort of farmland which really the farmland i really just wanted to do was like pumpkin patches around i ended up putting like a barn somewhere and like at the start i put like the cow plant in a nectar making machine because like like i don't know <laughs> i was like thinking i'm like oh maybe they like milk the cow <laughs> using the machine or something um so that was like my idea for it and i thought it was like different and like a little bit unique i don't know if anyone has done that i'm sure someone must have done something like that but um when i'm like doing a like decorating a house for vicky to tour i really try and do my best and to like put a lot more detail in than like i would usually do because when she does like shell challenge tours on her twitch stream she's like really really good at them and while she's like touring them she'll kind of like come up with a story for all the items together <laughs> and so when i'm building i'm always like really excited to like hear her story that she creates for um the sims that might live here and i feel like me having like me liking that is like putting um pressure on her to have a story when she tours it so she's watching this you don't need you don't need to make sure this you have a story for my builds but i'm sure it comes naturally to you anyway and this like whole landscaping ended up like coming along pretty naturally it just started like i just was adding on to it different pieces and i feel like it flows really nicely and i decided to wall off a lot of the areas because of how large the lot was i wanted to create some like like dimension throughout and it not being just like a bunch of trees so i was like okay let me put some fences in maybe it'll help and then it'll make me feel less pressure to fill in some empty space on the lot like the back of the houses it really like i raised up some terrain i put some rocks around and like a mixture of the same like five trees something like that and I end up doing like another little graveyard in the back, which like I followed all the rules that we had, like the five prompts that are listed, just because like I liked doing that. <laughs> and the flower field one, I kind of completely forgot about, but I did place a lot of flowers around. So I feel like this would count as it being located on a flower field. And I'm really happy with the like dirt paths in this build too. I used both dirt paths from horse ranch and they blend really well together and they're going to be some of my like go-to's i think from now on because they work really well together and they're very easy to find <laughs> sometimes when i'm doing terrain paint i'll forget which terrain paint i had picked out and then i'll have to like go and try to find it but if i just use the two from horse ranch i'd know that they're both right there and i'll never forget which ones i used and i did use a lot of debug fences in this build because i felt like it gave it a really nice like rustic vibe to it instead of using um just like the actual fence pieces which i guess the animals will kind of roam around i'm pretty sure um ken sims walk through those fences i'm actually not sure i haven't play tested it but the thing with shell challenges is that 
Um, I don't really focus on them being completely functional. They're mostly just like decorative, mostly for like my friends touring them in like whatever way, like Vicky will tour it on her Twitch stream. And I think we're going to do like a co-stream together touring the builds. I don't really know how it's going to work yet, but that's kind of our idea is to do like some sort of Halloween stream tour not on halloween but around the week of it which the build is due october 23rd but normally we extend the date a little bit and also we're not very strict with the rules of our shell challenge like say you accidentally break a rule or you don't follow the prompts at all we're not going to call attention to it. <laughs> we're just going to tour the build and appreciate what you made no matter what. Um, you could like literally, if you wanted to, put a whole nother room on the build, like in the back somewhere. I wouldn't even notice. <laughs> so like this is a, you could cheat if you want. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't like encourage people to cheat when this isn't, this isn't like my, oh, this isn't like, only my shell challenge. This is also Vicky's shell challenge, but I think she's also pro cheating on our shell challenge <laughs> anyway. But yeah, you can see me trying to do the roofing now, which like, um, I had to get over some of the pieces, maybe not like, um, fitting perfectly on the roof. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just do a balcony out here and like save myself from roofing all of that. But I wanted to challenge myself. And so I started like, actually roofing it which you'll see later on in the video that um a lot of the roof pokes in and i have to like go back and change some things because it was really poking in and i ended up fixing it enough where it's not very noticeable in most of the areas of the house thankfully i don't even remember what i did i don't think i recorded that part because i felt like it was going to take a while and i didn't want the pressure of like that being recorded so that I was like oh I'm taking too long trying to figure it out but you could see that I used half walls here to like set up for a chimney space because I was like I don't know how to roof this piece and I didn't want the roof hanging over the angled piece so I was like I'm just going to do this and I think it works out really well I like the back of the house a lot I keep feeling like I'm forgetting to say certain things about the like shell challenge and then I like stop and I'm like, you're going to confuse everybody. And like this like voiceover has been so much harder than most of my other ones for some reason. I think maybe it's just because I know that the video is like an hour long and I just like haven't been in the greatest mood. So it's like every little thing I say, I'm like, that like that's confusing or like I'm going to be like something's going to be misunderstood <laughs> and like I all like I did a voiceover yesterday and I was talking and then I'm like this this is dumb <laughs> let me let me just restart another voiceover so it's been a struggle <laughs> uh I did want to mention that um one there are some pack restrictions for the shell challenge if you want them toward live um we do own most of the packs, but it'll be listed which packs we don't have. Um, It's not that many. Like, there's a few kits that I don't own. And Vicky doesn't own the same kits as me for the most part, I think. Um, And then she doesn't own the, like, newest kitchen stuff pack. But that'll also be listed on the gallery in the comments. Um, so you could find it on the gallery, either mine, which is the Cracked Kyber or Vicky's, which I think hers is Siren Witch TTV. Yeah. And you could use the hashtag Kyber X Siren Shell. It'll all be listed in the description, too. So you'll be able to um, find it easily. There's a post on my Instagram and also her Instagram that has all the listed rules. So it'll be easier to follow because... Um, I don't know what I said and didn't say for the builds, but I found this that horse ranch arch. And so that's what kind of made me want to like make the back of the house have a path at least going through because I thought it was really cute. And I was like, OK, this could have the little graveyard in the back. I feel like that works nicely and it's not just like an empty area. And also another thing I wanted to say about the shell challenge before I forget is that there are no winners or anything. So it's not like. You don't have to feel like you're being judged 
for like your build or anything. It's literally just for fun. I don't think either of us would feel comfortable picking out a winner anyway. Um, I would feel like weird like picking like one or even like a few winners of a shell challenge. <laughs> so there's also no like incentive to um participate like i know some people do giveaways and stuff for like winners or like i don't know that we don't have any of that it's just for fun if you feel inspired by the shape of the shell or the rules you can participate um the fun part for shell challenges is like just seeing how different everyone's builds are using the same shell it's always like a lot of fun, especially when we're like touring them. And I don't know, it'll be a really like fun thing to see everybody's entries. I'm not like I've seen some of them already uploaded on Instagram and stuff. So I'm excited to see all of them. But yeah, now I'm actually doing some of the like walls for the build. And I like the um walls that I picked out. I feel like they pair really nicely together. It's like the cottage living stone with um the horse ranch wood and i feel like they look really nice together and i did it for both of the builds i used like the same sort of things um i used jungle adventure windows on the build to the left and then i used some of that also on the build to the right i'm pretty sure i add some other windows around like i think i used some base game ones for this build as well but yeah this is a long one i think it's my longest speed build I've ever like made I think um the exterior isn't even like <laughs> I think it might be close to being done but I do come back after and I add some stuff lining the pathways like I add candles and things like that which is kind of like how I've been decorating in Paleo lately which I've just recently got back into with like the fall update um and so it like reminds me of how I've been decorating in that game. So I think it's just carrying over to both games now. But like I feel like the pathways are framed really nicely, which is something that I always admire in other people's builds when I see them, the way that they like line their paths and make it feel very natural. Um, so I'm like happy when I look at this. <laughs> and I feel like um for this build because I feel like there's like so much happening like in the landscape and on the exterior it's been kind of like satisfying for me to like watch back and like see how it like came together because while I'm looking at it now I'm like I don't know if I would have been able to do this twice I think this is like <laughs> this is like if I would have done this shell challenge again it would not look this good I don't think that would be like an interesting thing though is to do the same shell twice and like see how different they are um I've never done that before <laughs> if I ever run out of things to build I could always return to an old shell challenge um and see what I would do differently with them but um, I have a lot of builds that I'm in the middle of doing and I have a lot of ideas because um, it is October now and like fall and Halloween time is what I'm most inspired and I have all these ideas I want to do but then I have all these other games I want to play because like there's so many like nice Halloween updates and things <laughs> so like I'm like I can't find the time to do all of it but I'll be like my like fall builds and my halloween builds will extend probably towards december anyway <laughs> that's just how it's gonna end up being like last year i started my halloween builds pretty early i started them like i want to say even like in july like late july but i know august for sure i had started but because i started them so early i kind of got burnt out from doing them <laughs> by the time it was like um october november and then this year, um, it's I haven't really been building as much because I have like so many like large work in progress builds, which is like this one, as well as another build in my Copperdale save file, which is like a strip of like commercial stuff. Um, and this is my first build that I was using the new nursery kit. So I bought this one. I didn't buy the painting one yet. Which, like, I think I'm going to end up buying eventually anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the items that come in the nursery kit. And so I was using some of it on the exterior as 
um, little pieces of clutter, like the toy box, just like on the dirt path, I thought looked really nice. Um, like this is like a build where I could take a lot of landscape pictures if I wanted to. I feel like people don't usually like land like um like zoomed in landscape pictures in like the Sims. Um mostly just like an exterior picture is what people like, just like the whole shot of the build. But I feel like I could get some really cute um like close-ups of some of the pathways. Maybe I'll even start doing a like short again because i haven't really made short form videos in a while it's like one of those things that i intentionally stopped doing so that i could like um not burn myself out <laughs> and like i really liked not having the pressure of doing a short for every single build that i do and i like the idea that like i have a lot of builds that i haven't made like shorts for and if like the time comes where I want to start doing that sort of content again, then I can pick it back up and I can like revisit some of my builds and like explore them a little bit in that way. One thing that I was like a little indifferent about with this build is the ivy that I'm placing around. Um, I placed some on the other build, but it wasn't a lot, but this build has a lot of it. Um, and with my G shade on, I feel like it looks good. But without G-Shade on, the green is, like, very, very bright. And I feel like it's a little bit too bright for, like, the fall landscape that I had, like, created. But I just, that was something I had to just look past. <laughs> I just had to, like, pretend, like, I'm like, yeah, this is, like, okay. You know that some of the green in The Sims is just very bright. That's just gonna happen. Um, I don't know if, like, I don't know if Vicky has my, um my filter that I use it wouldn't be hard to like um install say like if she wanted to tour it with the shader on um and if you want my shader like anyone who's watching I have it linked in my description I use G shade I've also like I finally changed the setting in G shade when the sim switched from like direct nine to direct 11 which broke my G shade um, so now I like changed all the settings so now I could run the game with direct 11 and my G shade still works, which, um, I, I don't know what any of that means. So if you, if you also don't know what any of that means, I can't help explain it because I'm like, I just know what it's called and what happened. I don't know the difference between them. So <laughs> there's that. And now I'm, I think, am I finally in the interior of the build permanently? Did I finish the exterior? Maybe. Um, the floor plan was a little bit tricky. The builds are very small, which we did want to make sure that the builds weren't like really big. Um, so it didn't take too long for people to like complete them, but also so that like when we're touring it, it's not like a very long tour because of how big the build is and you could see the roof poking in with the floor plan <laughs> and I was like trying to ignore it and I just couldn't ignore it and I think even just doing that was enough I don't know if I go back in and change it and like just accept that it looks a little bit different on the exterior and I know that this build it like seems very large and like I mean it is because I put it on such a large lot but I feel like if you put it on a smaller lot, it wouldn't like be as like it wouldn't take you as long to do. Maybe um, you see interior, you can see it's not that large. It like the interior came together very quickly. Like I did it in like um, like a few days, like here and there. Like I didn't spend like a long time each time doing it. Like this downstairs area, I finished pretty quickly and then. Um, this was like the bulk of the interior is the downstairs of this one house and then the upstairs is very small so it like worked out <laughs> on my towers I mostly just made it like a haunted like tower with floating objects around so that also saved some time because I didn't really furnish it a lot okay we are back on the exterior <laughs> to place some pumpkins around but I feel like that's probably it and um like right now while I'm doing this voiceover, I might not even be completely done with the interior because the house on the left has the farmer's market downstairs and it took me a lot because it's like individually placing a lot of produce and buckets and stuff, 
which I tried my best to cut out as much of it in the video later um, without like making it look weird. So I do want to go back into and like not record it and add more <laughs> and like you because like at a certain point you don't need to see me placing um a million apples in a bucket and I don't need to find something to talk about for maybe like multiple minutes of me just placing apples in a bucket <laughs> and I don't even have tool mod installed right now so I'm like holding off on doing that anyway because um like the grim reaper reward challenges broke for me and like thank you to like people who had suggestions on how to fix it the patch fixed the ui for me and i was really happy about it because it meant that i was able to do some gameplay but the patch did not actually fix the problem because um, I don't have my mods installed <laughs> and it broke again um, while I was streaming and it was like, it like upset me so much. I was like, oh no, because I went into create a sim when I unlocked like one of the earrings that came with the rewards. And as soon as I left create a sim, the game like auto started like some other cha like challenges that's like, oh, use the toilet make food it's like beginner like ways of how to like play the sims and it auto started all of those challenges and then the grim reaper rewards completely just went away and now i'm like i don't know <laughs> so i think i could try what someone suggested with like going to the files and doing something i'll have to read their comment again and like go through it but if this keeps breaking every time like the like you go into create a sim or like i don't know but if it breaks and then i have to wait every week for the patch to like fix it again for it to break again when i go into like create a sim where i exit my game i'm gonna be so frustrated because <laughs> i've been having so much fun with gameplay with it and i really want all of the unlockables and so like part of me is also scared because i'm like i really like the um painting that's really far in the challenges and i want to make sure that i could get that <laughs> and i'm like i'm so nervous but i'm sure it'll be fine the challenges run for like another month still so it should be okay and maybe like um maybe this is a problem for a lot of people and maybe it'll be fixed um and maybe it'll even be fixed with like when they do the big update for um the new expansion pack that's going to come out um which i'm really excited for the like is it like the life and death expansion pack um i did watch the trailer and um i know that like in one of my other videos <laughs> i was talking about how i wanted like this like enchanting like enchanted world which i don't think is the vibe of this pack but i'm sure there'll still be some lots that will be like new go-to build lots for me um, I'm very excited about the tarot aspect of it. Like, I read tarot myself, so I feel like it'll be fun to have my sims be tarot readers. Um, I just hope that it's, like, a little bit thought out and it's not just, like, super gimmicky and, like, doesn't have a lot of depth to it. <laughs> that would be, like, a little disappointing. But I'm excited that tarot cards are in the game because I always want to put tarot cards in my builds, but... We don't have anything like that so you always have to like maybe pretend another object is a tarot deck or something also i'm sorry that if like um you would prefer me to like be talking more about the builds it's just this this video is very long <laughs> so there's only so much i could say about the same exterior that we've kind of been looking at for a half an hour right now um but i did add more ivy into the back because i was just like i don't know what to do with it but i really like um how much ivy is on it but i did have that problem where it felt too green yeah you could see i'm trying to check and see if like red would look better but i didn't really like it and i didn't want to change everything to red so i decided that it being very green without g shade is fine and now we're on the interior I really love this kitchen area um, and how it comes along. It might be my favorite part of the house. Um, while I was decorating, I spent some time like 
going into tab mode and like pretending like I would be touring it to kind of see what it looks like from like every angle. And I really liked this area a lot. Um, I like the very tiny dining table area that has the open windows. That's like a really pretty area over there. And then I end up picking out a bunch of clutter I thought would like match the vibe of the house pretty much is what I was doing. I was like, okay, if I find a bunch of clutter that matches, I'm sure I'll be able to pick out <laughs> the rest of the furniture just fine. But the kitchen, the like I did have some problems with picking out cabinets. Um, I pick out some cabinets and then I change them all completely because I didn't like them as much. And then I spent a long time not knowing what sink to put in. And it made me realize that we don't have a good variety of kitchen sinks in the game. <laughs> and I feel like it's just like everything I want, it like didn't like give me the vibe that I wanted for the kitchen. And then I was like, oh, I really like this like copper sink. But then I take G shade off and then it doesn't look as good. And so then I was just like, I don't know, for some reason, picking out the counters and the sink for this build took me a lot longer than anything else <laughs> because like you'll see everything else like flows very naturally I feel like I pick out one item and then it leads to me liking this other item and I'm like okay it all like builds on top of each other <laughs> but then like the main part of the kitchen took me a little bit to actually do and I think I even took a break after I put down some cabinets like you see I picked out those cabinets and then I put them away I think those other the first cabinet I had is the one I go back to and I think that I didn't use those ones because I'm like you always use the cottage living counters I always use the horse ranch and the cottage living ones um so it was either one of those two I end up settling on <laughs> but I was trying something different but I could not bring myself to like these cabinets and like watching this right now like I don't mind them I feel like they look fine um maybe it was like when I took g-shade off or when I was trying to pick out a sink is when I started to like second guess the choice of um the counters <laughs> but I like the clutter like I just picked out all the clutter and I kind of liked even just how they were in this one area so it's like I'm just gonna put them all on the counter over here <laughs> because I originally I was just picking them out to like scatter around the area but I liked them all bunched like bunched together I spoke for so long that I was starting to trip over my words because my mouth was so dry. My throat is like a little like scratchy while I'm doing this. I had to get some water. But like I know that like sometimes people are like, oh, I don't know how you talk for so long. You don't run out of things to say. And it's like I feel like I take a lot more breaks than sometimes it's like, um, like, I don't know, maybe it's not as noticeable, <laughs> but I definitely don't sit here and I don't like talk for like this many like minutes um, without like a pause or like sometimes I'll like pause and then I put the recording in my video and then I'll listen back to some of it. And then while I'm listening back, I'll like think of something else that I wanted to say or I'll like skim through the next part and I'll like see something that I'm like, oh, okay, like I remember us thinking this or like, oh, like that part looks like I could comment on that. And then it, it like eventually starts like coming back. So it's not just like sitting here, especially for an hour. Like, I don't know how many pauses I've made. Okay, so I have like one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have like six cuts in this voiceover right now for like 30 minutes in and like we're halfway through the video but I think that the interior there is like a lot more going on um in here and I think that it looks very nice so I feel like it's still like interesting to see and to talk about but yeah I do like these counters <laughs> I like the darker wood and it looks really nice with the green um stove and fridge but did I do I have the sink I think I placed a sink still but I'm sure that I don't like the sink as much which is maybe why I hit it over on the other part of the kitchen so that it didn't like ruin the look of all of the clutter that I had already put on the counters that I really liked and another thing that I realized was that I forgot to put 
the three items, like, I don't know if you remember all the way at the start of the video, I said about the five rules and how you have to use the items that were provided in the front of the lot. Um, I never went back to the front of the lot, <laughs> so I never put those items in. And then when I was taking the, like, um, intro part of the video where it shows the whole video done is when I realized that I didn't put those items in <laughs> and I'm saying that now because I end up putting like the quill in the kitchen next to the notebook and the mug um did I put the quill there I think I did and then I put the clown I think in the haunted tower and then there was like this sun like wall sculpture that I just put somewhere in the hallway um we picked out items that felt very like us like for me and Vicky like the clown was like representing me and like the um sun sculpture was like representing her because she uses that a lot and I like to use the clown a lot <laughs> and that's kind of what we did but I think that this like kitchen and dining area is pretty much done I feel like this like cute table area is so nice like I would love to have like coffee here in like the morning looking out at like the fall leaves outside it's like really pretty and these two candles which I'm surprised I had the patience to use tool mod to even put the candles on top of there <laughs> because looking at that I was like wow that's pretty big for me to do because if something takes me a little bit of effort with tool mod I do not do it and I decide I like add some more spider webs in I had quite a few spider webs around because I was like, this is a haunted house. A ghost lives here. I wanted to like make it seem like a sim doesn't actually live here. Um, and it is just like abandoned and just a ghost wanders the house. Um, but then I was like, if I use too many of the certain spider web that has like a spider crawling around, that'll be an issue um, for people who are afraid of spiders when we're touring them. When I take pictures, I'll like try and make sure that the spider is not visible um, is usually what I do for it anyway. Like the spider only shows up in like live mode anyway. So I'll just take the pictures in build mode without it. And then for tours, I guess do like a content warning for this build specifically because um, the tower and the door leading to the tower is like covered in spider webs because I wanted it to be like, yeah, no one wants to go into this like haunted tower. And so it's completely covered in spider webs. Like no one's even trying to get into that area of the house at all. I might even go back to like when I'm going to add some more stuff to the farmer's market area. I think we're going to go back to the tower and add a little bit more detail into it because right now it's, not a lot in it. I mean, you'll see it once we get to that point in the video, but I'm still in the downstairs, which the downstairs, again, is, like, the bulk of the furnishing. I think it took the longest, but I could be wrong. Maybe the other house took a while, too, um, and I just forgot. <laughs> but I did use a lot of greenery in the interior, like, matched with a lot of brown, so I used the, like, hanging ivy on the, from the ceiling in the kitchen as well as over here. I think I used it in other parts of the house too. And then I used the like, what is it like the eco lifestyle um, ivy that I place around the walls. I do that in a bunch of areas of the house too. And just a little entryway over here that I'm trying to put just like a little bit of decor in. Because I didn't want it to be emptied. It's like the first thing you see when you walk in. Which I don't normally care about when I'm just building. But for like a shell challenge with tours. I want it like something. It's not like that exciting. I do put a fireplace um, across from the front door. So at least when you walk in. There's the fireplace and some clutter on top. Um, and I want to make sure that your sim can walk up the stairs. With the that like um ivy in front of it i think you can and i don't know if i would change it to make it functional i feel like that like one area i might and like if you can't walk through the fences outside to the barn i'll just like slightly open the fake gates a little bit so that you can so like little things like that i'll try and like 
just make sure it's functional but um like shell challenges everything's not gonna always be completely functional but like things that don't like take away from the aesthetic too much i can easily just move things around like that and like for the walls too i was kind of just grabbing any piece of greenery that I used in the dining room. So I'll like grab some herbs and stuff and like hang them over the archways and just on other pieces of the wall. And then the other two rooms, um, the back room is, what is that room? I think it's just a music room. I put like a pipe organ in there, I believe, and just like a chair and some more plants. And then the room towards like the right is a small living room with a i think i put a tv in i feel like i was debating on if i was gonna have a tv in here or not but if there is a tv i use the basement treasures kit tv and that's the room that has the like haunted tower off to the side of it and there's not really anything to do in the tower which i don't even i don't think sims can use the tower with the amount of spider webs that cover the door I'm pretty sure that Sims can't just walk through spider webs that you place, but maybe I've never actually tried. <laughs> so that could be something that happens um, in the game. And like, I really love the clutter that came with Lovestruck, just like the plant that I'm um, painting above the fireplace and the two like pillar candles. Like it's all the same pack and it all works so well together. Or at least I think those flowers are from Lovestruck. They look like they are but it could also be from another pack but i'm like 80 percent sure it's love struck and just some more ivy around hanging plants just to fill up some space i put a little bit of like wall dirt and like wall um mold around but not like too much i haven't even gotten to really play with the mold feature in gameplay much at all like my new save that i started um where i was doing the grim reaper reward challenges i have mold on in that house but it's been kind of a nightmare anyway because it's like a haunted house residential so my sims like constantly wake up in the night and then the teen kept having mold specifically in her bedroom which is weird because like there's nothing like dirty in the bedroom <laughs> so i don't know why the mold piles constantly form on her rug and like nowhere else like the bathroom usually the ghosts break the sink and stuff and the toilet you would think the mold would be in the bathroom but it it hasn't been <laughs> oh yeah i also like in this um living room area those two plants on like either side of the archway i feel like it frames it really nicely and i don't even know which pack those plants are from i've never used them before because i feel like the planters feels a little like modern for like my taste but I thought that it blended in really nicely and even if the like pots don't really look great I could have done like half walls over there and like pick the right size where it would cover it up a little bit and then use like a weathered wood wall maybe that could have also looked good I didn't even think about that but I like how it looks anyway in here I think I was just like I never used that because it came across as modern i don't know if i sized it down or not either i can't really remember and this new rocking chair from the nursery kit is really beautiful the only issue is that like there's not like a lot of like brown wooden swatches in the items which is okay so i'll probably just be using that one a lot and upstairs in the nursery i use i think it's like a cream color with gold accents which is also really nice so those are the kind of like the go-to's that I'm going to use in my builds from now on but I love the kit like every item in it even <laughs> just like the little circus um toy box is like my favorite item in it which is what I put outside and I just really love that kit a lot and now in the living room I wanted to use that love seat because i thought it was really pretty and i liked the color and the design of it but i thought that i needed like a three like seat couch in there wait do i because i remember doing something weird with the like bookcases on that wall and now i can't really remember what i did i feel like okay yeah i did use a three seater 
couch in there. <laughs> I was getting I was getting confused. I also change around some of the wallpaper and I use a lot more of the like just full wooden walls instead of the ones that are like some wallpaper in it because I thought that it looked better with more wood around than the other ones. And I do that upstairs too, but I'm pretty sure I cut out me going through and like putting all the wallpaper in because I was like, this video is going to be long. You can make some cuts. You don't need to like talk over you putting in the wallpaper and stuff because I do only ever use maybe like a handful of wallpapers. Um, when I'm doing a house, like I have like maybe something with color and then I have a wood wall and maybe a stone or brick wall and those are like the only three that I use and then variations like if I have like a cream wall I'll maybe like look for like other yellow walls stuff like that and I used that like that black and gold rug on the floor and I wasn't sold on it right away but I feel like it looks really nice and I just had to like not put a whole lot of thought into a rug because the rugs are kind of hard to pick out um it's like a huge struggle because I don't like a lot of rugs but I want to not have to just use the same few rugs over and over again um which is nice that with love struck I like the new rug that came with that so that's another go-to for me but yeah I was getting confused before because I thought that I had placed a um, couch between the two bookcases on that wall but I forgot that I had the two tall bookcases and then one like small bookcase in the middle just like to make it all look like it's built together on that wall which I I like that area I feel like it looks nice and it at least adds some detail into the build without me having to clutter a bunch of shelves because Having to like individually place books on shelves is too much. <laughs> and so I'm glad that those kind of worked together. And then just a little bit of a cut over into the haunted tower. Um, I'm using these pillared candles. Um, and I grab the light orbs from Realm of Magic and I place them. So it kind of looks like they would be like floating around instead of just like their place there. So it looks more intentional <laughs> that it's supposed to be. A little like magical and haunted um i'm not sure if it fully gets the point across but that's my way of doing that <laughs> and i do the same thing with some uh, like paintings i think like a couple paintings i end up putting the clown statue in this area too and just a whole bunch of spider webs around i might come back into this area and place more floating objects and i remember i was inspired to do the floating objects again because I did a shell challenge for Vicky once before, which was a haunted house. And I think it was a speed build. So it's still definitely on my channel somewhere. It was like Dahlia's haunted house or something. I don't remember the name of the builds, <laughs> but I had a haunted like tower area that had like, was it chairs and dolls floating around? Now I can't remember. I know for a fact I had toys floating all throughout a tower, but and I didn't use those glowing lights. So it was just like the um bears and stuff just like raised up a little bit. I don't know if the the lights would have um changed the effect at all. It would be cool if I could have like smoke throughout that room too. I'll look into what kind of like effects there are. Um, I know that like fireflies, it wouldn't really do much unless it was being toured like towards nighttime, which would take away from the exterior of the build. <laughs> so I don't think that would be um, that important. It would look nice for like a picture, but it's also difficult to even just take pictures of towers, especially on like upper floors because the camera goes super fast. Um, but yeah, now we're on the second floor of the house. This is the second bathroom in this place. I think that there was a bathtub downstairs. Is there? Yeah. Okay, so it's like two full bathrooms in here, which is maybe unnecessary because it is so small. And there is like one bedroom and then a nursery. So you don't really need two whole bathrooms in The Sims, but it filled up the space nicely. And I really like the Jungle Adventure um, windows in there, like the ones that are closed too. I think that looks really nicely with like the diamond window over on the side. Works well together. I put some more spider webs in the bathtub to like further show that 
this house isn't really being lived in. And I was like, okay, because if the first rule is that a ghost lives there, I wanted to make sure that it like, I fully kind of got that through somehow. Um, so this is the area that's haunted and like the farmer's market. I don't think, yeah, I didn't do anything with that. So someone lives there. Maybe they also just don't want to enter this house over here because they're scared of whoever lives in here. And I like this cozy bed area. Yeah, I've been putting the double bed on the wall, which I used to be against because um, I do not like playing The Sims with like the other side of the bed not able to be accessed by a sim without another sim having to like move over on the bed but ever since i just got over that and i'm like it's fine you build for fun and you build for you and um people enjoying your build is great <laughs> and if they want to move some stuff around they can maybe expand the room a little bit but i can't because it's a shell challenge so it just has to stay like that but I really like having the double bed um, against a wall in like a little nook area. It feels like very cozy and I like creating that sort of thing. So sometimes, oh my god, I was choking in. Sometimes my builds will now have a bed pressed against the wall if the space is very small. Or if I think that aesthetically it'll look really nice. Um, but yeah, for like family homes and stuff, I'll always try and have the bed not against the wall so that it's less of a nightmare for your sims <laughs> um but yeah and even just the like canopy thing over the top with the lights is really pretty it feels more like up to date and like modern which i don't think was supposed to be the vibe of this house but i thought it looked too nice to not include <laughs> there and like the colors in this room just came along really nicely I like just having all the wooden walls throughout and just all the brown furniture, the brown rug, and then the little bits of pop of pops of color with the flowers. Like there's like a red bouquet and like a yellow bouquet right next to it. I feel like it works really nicely. And yeah, I'm putting more of the just full wooden walls throughout. And as I'm looking at it, I can't really see the um, roof pieces sticking out as much. Um, which is good because I don't really see it in that hallway at all anymore. So I did something to fix it. And I think I covered up the roof poking in in the front room by making the like changing table its own separate room and kind of just trying to hide the fact that you can see the um, roof through it. <laughs> and you won't be able to see it that much because it's hidden away, which is perfect. But this is like the new baby stuff. I switched the swatch over you probably noticed that um when we came upstairs like the stuff was already here that's because i was like setting like i put this these items in before i even did the downstairs because i wanted to see like what the layout would be up here and like know what i could and couldn't do and at this point i wasn't sure what the other house was going to be because that was going to be just another house as well without like a kind of like commercial store downstairs that was going to be like a full house too so i was like trying to get an idea of what this house would be before i decided on what that one would be and then some floating dolls in here too because that scared me so i was like okay i'm gonna do this and then i grabbed the um, realm of magic orbs again i was going to try and do them in a different color but i felt like the yellow worked the best i felt like it just like matched what was already going on in the house and like there's not really any purple anywhere else so the yellow felt very warm and just made sense for that space i also love seeing like the house and the floor plan from above because like the rugs feel so like soft and like cozy and brings like a warm element into it um because then there's just like a whole bunch of dark walls and spider webs everywhere else and I feel like it's just like, I don't know, I like seeing it. And there's all the spider webs everywhere where I was like worried about a bed being against a wall and how it might be annoying. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a bunch of spider webs everywhere, which I think is even more annoying for people. And they would have to go and delete all of it. And it's like, it's, but um, I usually if I have really annoying things in my builds like that. I tend to put a disclaimer on the gallery and I, I explain, I'm like, this is for a shell challenge. So <laughs> there's like this stuff in it because um, I'm like, someone might complain about it.
which isn't like too far out there for like some people in the gallery <laughs> like i've gotten comments where like i'll have like a decorative tower this only happened to me once and it was a very long time ago but i remember it because it's the only time someone's ever like complained on the gallery to me about like how my towers didn't connect to anything and i was just like i feel like a tower not connecting is okay because like what's what's the purpose of those towers anyway you have other towers that <laughs> work perfectly fine in this build but i know that some things bother other people and then it doesn't bother others um this is the second house now i just use the same weathered wood wall in here that I used on the exterior of it. And I was just trying to figure out where the kitchen would go first because I was like, that's probably the most important thing to make sure I have in this part of the house. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it would all fit before I like completely like commit it to this being an apartment up here. And because I wanted the downstairs to be the farmer's market. And I was like, I really hope that this will all fit. And then once I got the kitchen and I was like, yeah, this will be completely okay. Um, this house doesn't need to have a double bed. It could just have a single bed. Um, I ended up extending this hallway because I wanted to try and fit two seats into the kitchen, which this is something I don't know is going to be functional or not. It feels like it won't be. <laughs> and I'll like, I'll look into that anyway and just see, because it would be nice to at least have that your sim be able to walk through there. Um, and if not, and if I can't find a way for it to work, I'll just put a comment saying that the kitchen would be functional if you just delete a chair. You don't need both chairs anyway. It's only one person would live here. And I use this little um, wooden bathtub, which I don't often use, but like I wanted to be very like rustic over in this part of the um builds and i thought that that like looked really nice with all the other wood and like when i was planning on the interior for this house i was worried because i'm using these open windows over here which like when i was placing it around i was like how am i gonna fit that into like a regular house um but switching to like an apartment for like someone who runs the store downstairs it like I feel like it was more okay that, that these windows are kind of more open and some of them just don't have like you can't really see out of the window from the one in the kitchen because it's so tall up there but yeah i feel like it like ended up working very well because if it was like a more fancy house like i feel like the house next door is kind of fancy i don't know if people would agree with that <laughs> but it feels fancy to me when i look at it and i couldn't imagine that sort of vibe with these windows but it ended up working out really well and i layered the same sort of ivy over here too because i like repeating things <laughs> and if i could eye drop it i will and just layering it with um some of my favorite curtains which um i think those were high school years i remember to put a little sign outside because i was like I want this to at least like look like it is a store from the outside a little bit. Um, and I think just having like a sign that has some apples on it outside <laughs> gets that point across enough and just putting some stuff on the walls. There really isn't too much on the walls in this area. I just like to use some yellow accents because I thought that it would look nice. And there's some like yellow in the tulips, which um i and i think that the chairs are yellow if i remember correctly i can't see it now yeah they're yellow and then the bedroom has some yellow so it like all comes together and in here i made this so it wasn't functional <laughs> which is another thing when i did that i had to tell myself i'm like but this is a shell challenge and i would like this chair to be kind of off to the side because i think it would look nice and i feel like it's an easy fix to just move over if you want um, cause I thought it would just added some more like personality to the build. And I didn't like the chair being completely in the way of this room anyway, lots of greenery just to make the place just like look, um, decorated <laughs> and not all wood everywhere. And that is a really good way to bring some greenery into a very small build because sometimes you can't put floor plants around cause there's not really any floor space. 
um not a lot of surface area too so having just hanging plants around really helps so which is why i like used a lot of the like those love struck planters <laughs> that are on the wall over there too next to the curtain ivy because i'm like it just like brings in what i want and what a floor like plant would do but without me having to like clutter up the space so much where it would be impossible for a sim to walk through at all i love the color palette in the bedroom like the rug i feel like really brings it all together and just like pulled it all together because you have a lot of yellow but then there's like some pink on the rug so there's like a pink candle holder on the like bedside table and it's just like i don't know i really like how the bedroom turned out and i didn't fit a dresser in like the apartment so i put one out here which like technically your sims who are like shopping downstairs could just walk up and just like open your dresser <laughs> which I'm, like no one's gonna do that <laughs> it's the sims but that, i was thinking of that when i was doing that but i was like i don't know what to put in this one little area and at least a dresser um would look good there so i'm just gonna put that there and it'll be functional you could just have a dresser which sometimes i don't always put in some builds <laughs> so it's good to have and down here is the farmer's market which is a lot of me pulling out a lot of items and throwing them on the floor and then worrying about where i'm going to put them later so you're going to see that a lot there's also a lot more like cuts in this part because of repetitively placing the same bottle over and over again or like the same fruit or vegetable over and over again <laughs> um which i think it's okay you'll get like the vibe of it anyway while it's like happening there is i used these like seed packet things as the like shop shelves where all of the stock of stuff will be um later on i grab one of the like refrigerator things that comes with get together i think where you could put um food in it and like it's, it's one of those items people use in the 100 baby challenge because the toddler could just walk up and grab the food out of it so it was like that and um i didn't fill it up completely because it you'll see it became a little bit annoying because there's a lot of snap points in it and i have to put a lot of objects down so that things won't snap onto it but i do want to like put a lot of different meat stuff in there and eggs and different things that you would buy that are refrigerated <laughs> and so i need to go and fix that um especially when i get tool mod back in my game so this won't be on the gallery right away but it will be at least like i mean definitely before the due date which is october 23rd but um if you're looking forward to having this build in your game um you might have to wait like at least a week um after this is uploaded to download it because i do want to add all these little things and i'm a little bit hesitant about putting my mods back in right away which you know what i'm gonna put them back in anyway because i want to start my next build um tomorrow so i guess i'll look back at this after i start that one i just need a break from putting a bunch of items down you can see all the items on the floor right now i like it looks a little bit messy and that's because it was very messy when i was doing this and every time i was pulling out items i was like okay i need this and this and this and it's good that like when i had better build buy installed i never turned it off before i like updated and like <laughs> like removed it so all of the like debug stuff is like scrolled through there like by default now until i like put the mod back in um so i was just scrolling through everything <laughs> which maybe also took a little bit longer but yeah, this is the like refrigerated area. I have some like um containers of milk. There's yogurt. Um, a cake that I thought would be like nice to have for sale. I've brought out some wine bottles, which moves places so many times. I don't even know if they I end up using those bottles of wine. I think I use different ones. Um, there's some like pizza dough over there. It feels very weird <laughs> that there's like all this stuff out and some of it's not even packaged up, but just gotta pretend um and then the off to the side i thought that would be like the checkout table so someone's like groceries are right over there and then there's like bags of like fresh pastries um i end up moving those so it's like oh they just bought a pastry 
and they have all their groceries and like the person who's like checking them out is sitting on that stool over there and there's no like cash register or anything like that it's just maybe they maybe it's even like they show up and like they trade stuff if they want or they just pay in cash to the owner of this place okay so here's some of the wine um off to the back I'm sure that like from what you're seeing in this video and then what's going to be uploaded to the gallery, um, it'll the shelves will probably be a little bit more full. And like I do put a bunch of stuff in while this is being recorded anyway, but I'm just not going to include the rest of it. Um, it won't be in the screenshots either because I'm going to do this all after and just make sure that the build is like full enough where it's like I feel happy with it and I feel better about like knowing someone is going to be touring this and looking at it <laughs> it's not just like some of it is like like low effort because it was starting to become low effort if you like i could only place so many things at once like this like um bottles of like oil or something placed over and over again <laughs> and just all of that sugar and flour and this is the wine that I end up using because I like the labels on like the one down in the bottom left, I think is like mead because it has a B on it. So I think it's like honey. And then there's like a midnight flower wine that I really liked the logo of the bottle. And I feel like Vicky would really like it too because it looks very witchy. And I think that she'll really like those bottles. And I, I when I was doing this, I was imagining her sh like touring it and like pretending like she's shopping and like picking out her groceries. <laughs> And like pretending like it's like the supermarket simulator too that she plays on her stream. Like and these are all predictions of what I think she's gonna do when she tours this part. But one hundred percent, she's going to go shopping and she's going to pick up one of those witchy bottles. Like she has to. And maybe I'm wrong. And maybe she's watching this before then, and so she's going to make sure to do it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I place all these buckets around, and at this point. I'm just placing things to get it off of the floor. And I'm like, okay, come back to this later. I'm going to put onions here. I'm going to put tomatoes here. And this is what's going to end up happening um, when I do end up coming back to it. But we're about to get into the screenshots, which I haven't taken yet. So I'm just going to have to stop yapping until then. Okay, so here are the screenshots. I also went back and I looked at it in like summertime and I felt like it still looked really good. I was worried that... The flowers outside would be too bright, but I really liked how it looked, at least with G-Shade on, because I'd also forgot that I had to go into build mode to make sure I took pictures without any spiders appearing in them. <laughs> and I have a picture of it all the way at the end. I was also kind of happy with the farmer's market. I feel like I don't have to add too many more objects, but I still will fill up some of the buckets and stuff like that, which I'll do at some point this week. But yeah, there it is in summer. I feel like it still looks really good. But if you want to participate, this is due October 23rd, 2024. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.